You are live. Good luck. Alrighty. Howdy. Um, just start. We'll start the countdown, then we can talk about the game. So we'll go in uh, three, two, one, and let's go. So uh, this is Magic Knight Ray Earth, released for the Sega Saturn. It was an early release in Japan, uh, last release in the U.S. by Working Designs, uh, based off the anime and manga series. This is, the, I think, the last game that was made based on Magic Knight Ray Earth. Uh, clamp. <laughs> so we're gonna start out doing uh, this Tokyo Tower skip where we get pushed out of bounds by an NPC and this skips about the first 35 minutes of the game. Uh, for whatever reason when you go out of bounds sometimes there's like little spots that deal damage. This is the only like part in the game where it's actually useful. Uh, so normally you only have access as the main character uh, Hikaru in this section because like this is like the intro of the game but when you die it swaps between the characters like they're all there and when we die uh, in Tokyo Tower, it doesn't know what to do with us because you're not technically supposed to die here. So it puts us in the first village of the game, which skips uh, like the all the opening cutscenes, uh, all the opening dialogue, uh, which, and then there's like a, an opening dungeon where you get your first uh, where you get your weapons. So it skips all that. We get our weapons, but they're at level one, which means that they don't have they don't they barely do any damage and they don't have any charged attacks. So, I don't know if some people were here last year for Questing for Glory, uh, I, it's Karaoke, I also run this game. Um, we did a rate, me and Shen talked at a race of this game, and this was before, like, any of these skips were found. So we had to sit through a whole, like, 20 minutes of cutscenes, and a whole tutorial dungeon, and some bosses, and, you know, a bunch of voiced, you can't skip voiced lines in this game. I forgot so, to, um, to, uh, set my options. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes, we, uh, set the, uh tech speed to fast and uh, change the control scheme to be a little bit easier to pull off another glitch that was uh, discovered. Yeah, so in this town, um, these, the guys, these, this town is being plagued by monsters that are a result of the princess being kidnapped. And we're going to go help them out because it's our duty to grow as individuals to make our weapons stronger. And basically, like, the whole story is that we're trying to find these three uh, ancient machines to uh, battle the evil Zagat who kidnapped uh, the Princess Emerald, who basically holds Sephiro in balance. And so, uh, if you notice, I'm jumping in, in into every screen transition. Um, in a lot of areas, it's not that important, but... Uh, basically, you build up speed to run, so you have to like walk in, in the same direction for a little bit to get into running speed. And normally, when you go from a transition to transition, it resets that. But if you jump into it, it keeps uh, it going. And in a lot of areas, it's really useful to keep uh, going fast. So now we're in this tutorial dungeon. This fella, Lucino, he's um, a magician himself, and he put up a barrier to keep the monsters out, but the barrier isn't working so well anymore. And we're going to click this potion here. Uh, we normally don't get in the run, but getting as a marathon safety in case uh, the magic glitch decides to be a little mean. Uh, we'll explain that a little bit later. But for now, we're just going through this dungeon. Uh, it's basically giving you as an introduction of what to expect in future dungeons, uh, mostly involving pushing blocks onto buttons. <laughs> and there's... So, yeah... The, the first dungeon was just kind of a walkthrough cutscenes type of dungeon, nothing really important. This is the first puzzle dungeon that teaches you how to, like, these are going to be the puzzles that you're going to be solving throughout most of the game. Pushing stuff, opening doors, hitting switches, jumping on things. Yeah, so uh, he, this guy is just trying to, to hinder our progress, and we're not having any of that, because we're, we're the Magic Knights. <laughs> So having running speed is just nice for moving faster all over the place. And sometimes there... these uh, Minotaur Centaur things uh, just like chasing you around. And they're real mean when they do. <laughs> yeah, because this is a uh, working designs localization, um, they did buff yeah. the speed and power of a lot of the enemies in the game. So a lot of the enemies are going to be moving faster, they're going to have more HP, and they're going to do more damage than in the Japanese version. 
the upside is that the, the English version is a lot more stable and a lot quicker overall because they skimped on the voice acting. And But they also did a ton of bug fixing for the game to just mm, make it much more stable and playable. Yeah, plus apparently some parts were reprogrammed because source code might have been lost. So, uh, yeah. This game had a troubled uh, release, so to say. <laughs> yeah. So they're just going to jump across this gap here. Uh, they expect you to wait for a platform, but you can just jump right across. We're going to get um, Fu's level 2 spell, uh, which is her only damaging spell. It's uh, called Green Squall. And it's not particularly useful. It doesn't do much damage, but it's useful for solving a puzzle here. Well, not a puzzle, but like a, I guess more of a blockade. Whoa. Yeah, sort of the first introduction to, hey, here's what you need to do for sometimes for solving uh, puzzles in uh, dungeons with magic, which will crop, uh, crop up, crop, uh, crop up a few times. Enemies are not playing uh, nice right now. No, they're not. <laughs> as long as Fu isn't dead, uh, it's okay. Because there's a lot of times where if a, char if a specific character dies, you have to restart the entire dungeon because you need them alive to finish the dungeon. So now we're near the boss room. Uh, Lucino goes in, freaks out because there's a giant spider crab in there. And normally this boss takes a long time to kill when you don't have your first level up because... You don't because your charge attack does uh, infinitely more damage than your just basic slash but we're gonna be doing something called a magic glitch that allows us to infinitely cast spells as long as uh, we time it correctly basically if you press the character swap and the magic button at the same frame uh, you'll use the mana the character you swap to but it'll do the mana check on the character you're swapping from and it also won't actually use the mana up. So here, we see that Hikaru had full magic, and he's going to swap to Umi while casting magic at the same time, which will cast Umi's uh, Water Dragon spell. But Hikaru still has full magic. So we can just abuse this to cast as much magic as we want without worrying about running out of MP. Now, if you don't hit it frame perfect, you can miss... And what'll kind of happen is that the person you're switching from, they're uh, good. That's a good, uh, pretty much perfect boss. So he moved around a little bit. One miss, I think. But uh, the person who's you're switching from, their sound clip will play. They'll use their MP, but no magic will come out. Yeah, and it's really and, annoying when that happens. Yeah, that's like the way you know that you kind of messed it up. And if you, um, you know, use up all your magic on everybody, then if you don't have enough magic to cast the spell from the person you're casting from then they're not going to be able to cast any magic and that's why we pick up that uh mana potion really early in the dungeon there just because that boss takes forever with just your basic hits yeah and that's just basically a marathon safe thing if you're doing actual runs um you definitely wouldn't get it since you just have to go out of your way for it luckily casually a lot there's a lot of mana and health potions that are just along the way so it's you know pretty safe if you ever if you ever need need extra help Plus, there's actual, like, little upgrade items. Um, you might have seen a little floating, uh, floating red heart in that dungeon that we skipped over picking up. That just gives you, gives you plus one HP for a character of your choice, and then there's also MP upgrades. I think, uh, we do pick up, uh, one MP upgrade, I believe. Yep. we pick up one it. for Umi just to refill her mana, and it also helps for a later boss fight just by not having to rely on the magic glitch to kill a specific phase of a boss more quickly. So now we're going to the next uh, town, which is ta called Taflon, has lovely music, uh, but we need to get across the water, and we don't know how to swim, because uh, I guess it's fairly common in Japan to not know how to swim, which was surprising to me to find out. But the guy who teaches us how to swim is currently uh, pretty is in a pretty depressive state. He's uh, failed to save uh, a little girl's animal that drowned and he kind of exiled himself over it because he couldn't, he just couldn't bear making the little girl sad. 
because I think he, I'm not sure what his relationship was with the girl, but I know he really cares for her after like her parents died or something like that. But now she has a new pet. Uh, it's a little pink dragon thing. So we just talked to these two people. One is to tell us about Kaltus, the guy who's going to teach us how to swim, and talk to her. Um, and both of them are just like story-required triggers. Then we go back to Poly Zoo where we find him hiding, and he'll just tell us to bug off. <laughs> yeah, he's not. He's not really interested in uh, helping anybody right now for any reason. So. Uh, so yeah, this is the Saturn game, so there's going to be a lot of loading times, and you know, there's the black screen with some music playing in the background as we wait for everything to load in. Yeah, uh, each loading screen is like 15 seconds, if I recall. So you definitely don't want to accidentally go somewhere you don't want to if you're running the game. I've had I've done that a few times. Yeah, like hitting the map shortcut button by accident just boots you out to the world map when you're in a town. It's like, oh, okay, I'm gonna wait like a minute or so to like get back to what I was doing, essentially. Yeah. There will be a point later in the run where we are going to abuse uh, uh, something called the map glitch. Uh, the reason this is called any percent no polyzoo skip is uh, there's a skip you can do in polyzoo village, the first town, that lets you just go straight to the final dungeon. It's a very difficult and involved skip that involves something called a map glitch, uh, which we will be using later in the run. Uh, we'll explain that when that comes up. But now that we talked to Caltus there, we're going to go see Sarah again and find uh, Caltus there, uh, just, you know, checking in on her, see how she's doing. And it turns out she's doing pretty well, that she found a new pet, and she's pretty happy. And she's, like, sad that Caltus is wallowing in self-pity. But now he's going to decide to teach us how to swim, and the best way to teach someone how to swim is just to toss him in. <laughs> And then uh, here we have Ascot showing up. He showed up before, uh, after we defeated the first boss. He's uh, one of Zagat's uh, henchmen. And here we're going to get our first bit of voice acted dialogue in the run. Uh, if you play casually, there's a lot of voice acting early on, but it kind of disappears later on. But Fu, she, she's not really taken to swimming, so she just gets a nice little uh, life preserver. Clef. And Precious. Mysterious Cypher Lecture number two. Hikaru and the others have mastered the skill known as Roaring Rapid Wave Cut. Yes, in other words, the girls have learned how to swim like beavers. Now they can journey to the ice cave on the island to the north. So like typical working designs, they did all the dubs the themselves. The girls swim forward. It's that easy. Uh, in-house. Okay, that's it for now. And if you're we familiar with other games, game. you might hear familiar See voices there, as kids. well. Uh, some of these voice actors have appeared in other working designs games. So now we can swim, uh, basically just by mashing the attack button, you can go in whatever direction you're facing. But now we're no, gonna so finally so. go into this area, and we're gonna be surrounded by whirlpools. Uh, go on. Yeah, a lot, there's a lot of mashing for um, swimming. It's just mashing your attack button over yeah. and over again. So. Yeah, luckily and, like, you don't you know, need to mash too even... fast, at least. Yeah, there's a there's a rhythm to it. You don't need to you know constantly mash. There's a, there's a rhythm to going as uh, fast as you can without killing your your wrist. Yeah, I'm as. I mean, I wouldn't run this game if, you, if the faster you mash, the faster you go. Because <laughs> that would be just too much for me. So now we're in the second dungeon, which is, of course, an ice-themed dungeon. It stopped him. That guy does a lot of damage. And uh, this dungeon relies uh, revolves around Hikaru's fire magic. So we're just going to use that to blow up... Or melt some ice. Blow up some ice. <laughs> And then, of course, more block pushing. And we're 
learn Hikaru's second spell here. Um, if you notice uh, below the character portraits that there's a black spot there before they switch to Fu, uh, you see an icon. It's because of just how the Tokyo Tower skip works. Go away. Uh, and basically, we don't technically learn our first spells, but we always have them anyways. Yeah. So now we're going to learn uh, Karu's second spell, which is a really really strong spell. Uh, it, it's really laggy, though, and has a fairly long animation. So, so that the... means we're going to be hearing it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> swap to Fu. So since uh, Karu's out of mana, I'm just going to be uh, using the magic glitch to cast the spell. Uh-oh. There we go. Nice, uh, just jumping over the... What do you call it there? Uh, the spikes. <laughs> yeah, it's you can just smash jump and they don't seem to hurt you. So now we're going to be using Fu for the rest of the dungeon. Because, uh... She needs, she's needed to hit that switch. And her magic's just kind of useful since it clears the room, or clears the map, uh, without, uh, uh taking too long. <laughs> Especially in this room here, you have to destroy all of the bugs to open the door. Yeah, and since and... Uh, we're pretty low level, they take multiple hits to kill. Yeah, they, you hit them once with your physical attack and they'll expand in size, and then you'd hit them again or twice more or something. Yeah. And we don't have, like, we don't have Fu's homing attack yet, so we can't just, like, charge her bow and have it hit out of range. It's the best just to use her magic, because it hits, like, the entire screen, and uh, they die in one hit to magic without becoming big-sized. Yep. Like, before the magic glitch was discovered, we would, you know, drain our magic and then rely on phys on charged physical attacks to take down bosses or various enemies. But with the magic glitch, we never do a physical attack anymore. <laughs> there was uh, one fight that we did because it was faster just based on lag. But not anymore due to uh, just uh, extra routing coming in where we level up even less than before. Because uh, now on the route, there's two dungeons we skip. And so we no longer get important level, level ups there for uh, Umi, who's uh, normally the most powerful physical attacker. Oh man, the audio got stuck. <laughs> <laughs> Good game. Yeah, that occasionally yeah. happens, where the audio just randomly gets stuck for some reason. So yeah, the original runs of this game were just pretty much going through the game as you know fast as possible doing uh getting some extra pickups along the way for or going into this place called the rainbow junction shop you get these gems and when you collect a certain amount of each color of gem you can get extra items like an escape item to escape from dungeons and one that restores your mp when you stand still but uh one standing still is slow so we dropped that and two the only time we need to escape from a dungeon we can just run into enemies and knock ourselves out and get warped and have no penalties that way so all of those items got skipped um and then it was a pretty standard like around what was it three hours two and a half hours for a run for a while yeah until earlier this year when um uh, Tasser and Runner uh, Mitjitsu found a bunch of these uh, warp glitches and stuff. So, uh, yeah, here's another boss fight. We're gonna cheese it. Or Shentok's gonna cheese it, and I'm not playing. Um, just by casting Red Thunder over and over and over again. Uh, the magic does damage no matter where he is on the screen. And he's to kind of. And the spell lasts long enough so that his invulnerability frames are gone by the time the spell is done, so we can just cast it again right away. Uh, the way we used to fight him is we'd lure him over to the right, and he would just kind of land and fly and land and fly and not actually really attack us, because he's trying to land on us. And just like that, so, yeah. he's dead. 
Yeah, he turns red and he's supposed to like move faster and stuff like that, but um, he doesn't do anything just because we're hitting him with magic and the uh, stun lasts long enough that he doesn't move or anything. Yeah, and I was like luring him over to the right that basically there's a like the entire right side of the screen is basically a safe spot where the boss can't hit you at all. <laughs> so this fight's pretty trivial once you figure that out. But this boss is also unique in that you can continuously cast even when the fight is over and he's dead because uh, you just keep, can keep casting magic because it takes a few uh, moments before he actually dies. <laughs> So now Sarah's sad that her new pet Jiminy is dead, but now we get our first ancient machine uh, for Umi named Saris, and it's just like a giant water dragon, but it's also a giant robot, <laughs> like Gundam style. We'll be seeing those giant those giant robots that come in uh, important later. This is the first machine we get. We won't be seeing the next one for a relatively long time. The game kind of goes into its own little thing for a little bit here um, when it comes to the plot, I believe. Um, you can kind of tell because there's a lot less um, animated cutscenes for a short time now. There's like a couple, I think when you meet Rafarga there's one, and then there's like nothing for a long time, and it's a little shorter now just because we skip a bunch of stuff in the middle. Yeah. So this is like the first time we get introduced to the villains in the run. Normally they have like a, a big introduction at the beginning of the game, but since we skip all that, this is the first time we actually see them. Yeah, and so there's that there's that one lady in the crystal over there. Like we don't even know we don't we totally skipped uh her getting crystallized. That's um Alcyon. Oh wow, I am yes, Alcyon. I was told I was gonna call her Neh Nehelenia, but that's a Sailor Moon <laughs> <laughs> evil lady. Same thing. <laughs> They're both magical yeah, They girls. look the same. They look the same. <laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah, she attacked us and failed, and they got, got angry and encased her in crystal. So we skipped, like, all of that. Yep. So now the whirlpools are gone, and we can go on to the next town, uh, which is a village covered in snow due to a volcano eruption that occurred. And that's basically the only reason we're going there, because we were told early on by another fellow that we don't see for a long time, named Clef, that we have to go look in the uh, sea, sky, and volcanoes for uh, our ancient machine. So we're going to the volcano here, because that's the only clue we have. We've seen Clef. He's the guy in the mirror. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he's the guy in the mirror. <laughs> I forgot about that. He's the guy that teaches us our magic. Basically, he gets turned to stone, and... And the only way to free him is to kill Zagat. Yeah, this game only covers season one. Of the, uh, season one of the anime, and the, I think it's the first three, which is the equivalent of the first three, um, like, compiled volumes of the manga. So here I switched to Fu only because in this cutscene she gets placed uh, closest to where we want to be next. Uh, this, there's only like two cutscenes like that in the game, and both of them you need to be Fu for it, amusingly enough. So change my magic there. And now we need to go stay at an inn for plot reasons. Uh, there's three other, wait no, two other times we have to do that. Yeah, there's three, three inns total. Inns... It's, they're literally only for plot. They, you, the way you restore uh, HP, MP, if you've seen like in the middle of dungeon, and then also in towns with these little fountains, you just walk up to them and press the A button, and woof, you have uh, everything refilled. Yep. So the pink-haired lady Caldina, uh, her specialty is dancing magic, and she was using that to uh, hypnotize the, the villagers to mine the volcano to search for. Her. The ancient machine before we get to it. Yeah, un unfortunately, in quotes, she was only able to brainwash the men of the village because uh, the green-haired guy, Ferio, he's a good guy, was uh, playing for the women and distracting them. Um, we, we we're supposed to meet Ferio earlier. He uh, helped us in. He helps us in the tutorial dungeon. Uh, Fu kind of has a crush on him. 
That's why she was getting uh, angry that Faria was uh, flirting with other women, even though she's only met him for like five minutes. Yeah. And so he's waiting outside where we need to go. He's like, "Hey, let's let's help each other out." And we just tell we just tell him off. He's like, "Nah, you're on your own." And then Fu regrets it. <laughs> and then we decide to go inside just to tell him we're sorry. And I guess rescue the villagers at the same time. <laughs> yeah, they're fine. We just have to stop Caldina and, and they'll be fine. So here we're gonna learn. Oh, this is like a like a giant room instead of like a, a, a regular dungeon. There's a lot of branching paths, but it's just all one big room. And what there's we need... a lot of treasure chests and items, and like you can easily get lost in this dungeon. But the actual way to get to one, they're heading towards a mirror first to learn to spell, and then two to the boss. It's actually just a really simple path. Yep, we just have to go to the mirror to learn a puzzle spell, but it's actually going to be our most useful spell for a long time. It does the same damage as Hikaru's level 2 spell, but it has less lag and it's about a second and a half faster uh, in casting animation. Oh, I was mashing too fast. That's what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> And uh, we're only to learn one more spell in the game. Uh, each character learns three spells, but with the way the route is set up, uh, we don't need to. We only need to learn Umi's level two, and up and uh, Fu's level two, and up to Ikaru's level three. Uh, level three for Ikaru is mandatory. It's a really great spell in general, but it, it's impossible to not learn it. So we need to kill this guy. Uh, there's a puzzle right above that we need to solve. Oh, whoops. Whatever. And then we're gonna grab this mana upgrade for Umi, and it's the only one we grab in the game. But basically, with the the way interactions work, if there's an enemy on the screen, we cannot uh, pull out these flames with our new spell. It's really weird. It's, yeah, I, guess targeting it's, thing. I guess it's just some sort of priority. Yeah, priority targeting, you do the enemy first instead of the stuff in the background. So now we're going into an interesting boss fight. Uh, basically, we're on a separate platform from uh, the boss, and what you're supposed to do is use uh, Fu to deal damage with her homing arrows, but since she hasn't learned them yet, uh, we just have to use, we have to let her rely on magic spam. Yeah, Fu is still at level zero in terms of her uh, level ups. Um, basically, in the tutorial dungeon, you have these basic weapons that don't have the charge attacks at all, and then you finish the tutorial dungeon and bring back the escudo. It's called a Escudo, escudo um, or back to Precia. We also we saw in the uh, little tutorial thing for the swimming. Bring it back to Precia, and that's when you level up your weapons and you can get the charge attacks. But because we skipped the first level by doing the Tokyo Tower glitch, we don't get that level up. And yeah, that's Caldina. She goes down really easily. That boss fight used to be a uh, giant pain because you'd use all your magic. Um, if you had a potion, you could use the potion to do a little extra damage, and you'd still have to do physical attacks. And she has a really annoying surround attack that. If you hit the wrong one, it does damage to you, basically. Yeah, she basically blows up on you. <laughs> and then they get another uh, cutscene with the bot or with the uh, the main bad guys. No, oh, apparently you can skip uh, the final spell for Hikaru. It's just you know obviously slower. Yeah, I saw that. Basically, Hikaru's final spell. Uh, it's really expensive mm. to cast. It costs ten mana. Seems my little uh, but it, it kills any boss in, in three casts for whatever reason and just does an insane amount of damage. It's an I win button. Because yeah. you get it so close to the end of the game, they're like, get it so close to the end of the game, and it's so expensive, they're like, you can only cast it once, so, you know, do some damage with it, and, you know, maybe twice if you use a potion, but, uh, <laughs> glitches. Yep. So now when you go talk, back, talk to the innkeeper again, uh, basically, she tells us to talk to uh, Rafarga to be able to 
maybe he's like says maybe you can break down the wall that's blocking the path to the next town. So uh, basically, talk to her. We're gonna just get running speed here. And his, instead of having a door, his his door is just in case, or his uh, entrance way is in case of nice, because he's just a big strong guy. And since he's a nice guy, he's gonna help us out. Uh, he's gonna help us. Uh, he's gonna teach us how to break down brutal walls. But we're not quite getting the the hang of it, so we're just gonna take go to go to bed for the night. And uh, Hikaru can't sleep, so we're getting up. Uh, find that Rafaga can't sleep either. We're gonna get uh, his backstory. He used to be, I think. I don't know if he was, like, the head guard or just a member of, like, the princess's royal guard. But he's, like, after Zagat kidnapped her and there was nothing he could do, uh, he just kind of went into isolation. Because he just couldn't reconcile with the fact that there was nothing he could do to keep the princess safe. But seeing us has reignited his uh, passion of some sort. <laughs> and now Umi's in trouble. Turns out there's a bug on her bed, and she's not too happy about that. But now we finally learn our pulverizing bash move. And Priestie has... Mysterious Sephiro Lecture number three. You've just mastered the skill known as the Pulverizing Bash. Indeed. By running to increase your speed, the power to throw yourselves increases as well. You can destroy places with weak and foundations or And this is the final skill we ease. learn in the game. There well, is one more skill. Uh, it's called the Instant run. Dash, so you which you uh, press a button That's and right. start running in place instead approach, of having to uh, build up speed then... by walking in a straight line for a while, but uh, we skip that one now, because it's not now. technically necessary, because the only place up. you require it, Boom. we skip that dungeon as well. It's uh, it's helpful, but it's slower to learn it, it's, it's just, you know, faster to um, use the, the jumping, I guess, exploit glitch thing to jump between scenarios, uh, scenes, screens, in a later dungeon to be able to make some uh, platform jumps that you would need running speed for. Yep. Like having instant dash is really nice, but uh, we have to go so far out of our way to get it now in the with the current route. So we're just gonna uh, go to the, ah NPC. And now we finally get to go to the next uh, area, but first we need to go through the Crimson Pass, I believe the name is. Yeah, Crimson Underpass or Crimson Pass, something like that. Yeah, Crimson Underpass. You're right. Yeah, I like the boom that um, Clef does in that last lesson thing, because you can actually hear, if you listen to the audio, you can hear his uh, voice actor like, snap his fingers right before he says boom. And they just kept it in, because of working designs, and it's funny. <laughs> so there's no boss here, it's just um, like a halfway dungeon, I guess. Just, uh, as, yeah, it's just as a way to get to the next area. A filler dungeon with some kind of hard-hitting enemies and a lot of, um, kind of tough jumps in some places. Oops. You just want to keep moving as fast as you can and jump at the right <laughs> time and not fall. Yeah. And not get hit. <laughs> and die. Oh. <laughs> and then fall again because, um, I'm what do you at, call it? I'm good at falling. Um, spacing because you got hit in the pit. 
Okay, we'll play it safe and uh, use Fu's healing magic here. That only heals HP. You can't heal someone who has been knocked out, unfortunately. You have to use a potion for that. Or talk to a fountain. So using no. magic on those... <laughs> Oh man! Oh no! Yep, so I gotta make sure that Pooh doesn't die. Oh, I have a potion I mean, if I need it, that's yeah, right. You still have that health potion, so I'd uh, keep that in quick mind just in case, especially with these upcoming last couple uh, areas, especially because you don't have the car to cast the magic on the block. Oh, uh, you're pretty blocked there with going through the side, I guess. I'll just destroy him with magic. No, you don't. Okay, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't... This this area is pretty tough, especially with your reduced stats um, going through, just because the enemies hit really hard, and there's those fireballs spamming at you, and you get knocked in the pits and whatnot. But now we're in the next town and it's on fire. So we gotta we gotta do something about that. Turns out some kid got kidnapped as well and stuck in this mansion. And we gotta go save the kid. And for because whatever reason, is, uh, the doors are fine, think. but everything else is destroyed. Yeah, the doors the locked doors, the magically locked doors with the uh, special keys are fine, but everything else is collapsed. This this is Final Fantasy VI, right? <laughs> yeah. The burning mansion, there's gonna be a mom bomb at the end. Something oh goodness. like that. Nah, we got better than mom bomb, we got a fire skull. So this is kind of a, a maze dungeon where you have to pick up these three colored keys to to pick, pick up a blue key to pick up a green red key or to get a green key, something like that. I forget the order. Um, yeah, and there's all these um, little fire rats running around that respawn out of the flames, and it's just... It loops a lot to, to, to kind of backtrack as you get more keys, and it's really annoying. It's my second... I guess my, my second least favorite dungeon now. It used to be my least favorite by far, because I always get lost. Yeah, I'm getting really lucky on the rat spawns. And this is like the only one you can't really dodge. Like, there's, like, a little choke point where you're, they're just waiting for you. But so far, this is going really well. The mice are being nice. But see, look at that. The wall just breaks down after you open the green door. This... <laughs> <What> the... <laughs> Just get, like, knocked all the way back from that oh, mouse. Oh, you got the uh, damage <laughs> knockback. <laughs> I'll talk more about that damage knockback uh, when we get to a later dungeon, because that was kind of the, a precursor to a glitch that we used to skip a dungeon. So it turns out Alcyone's actually the cause of all this. Uh, she's basically the main thorn on her side, for the in, as far as the story goes. So she summons three little fun fire skulls that we're just gonna take down. And when you take all three down, it, it turns into one super skull, which uh, dies really quickly to uh, Umi's magic. And this is the only point in the game where the element of your magic actually matters. I don't know if I'd call it element, because, like, magic technically doesn't have an element, I guess. But, like, uh, Hikaru's magic doesn't do any damage, and Fu's magic doesn't do a whole lot of damage in general. But Umi's just wrecks this boss. And just like that, she's dead. It's dead. <laughs> and the yeah. little kid is saved. <laughs> uh, 
that boss can be really annoying if you're, um, I guess, you know, taking it casually or slow or whatever. Um, he moves around relatively fast. His hand comes out and leaves, like, paths to hit you, and then he leaves, like, drops a fire around, so you can kind of get a cornered very easily, and um, I haven't, I haven't seen the the intro of the fight when you have the three skulls running around, but I'm pretty sure that's annoying too if you don't uh, destroy those all at once. Man, I don't remember. That was forever ago since I did it normally, like 2013. <laughs> it seems as if Alcyon has been denied success once more. She not only so yeah, we have clairvoyance into what uh, Zagat and his company are, are doing. <laughs> It is nothing short of a complete disgrace, my lord. I take full responsibility for her escape and her actions. I am prepared so to So we see a little bit of a, more of a Nova here, and he's a, a pretty loyal guy. Unnecessary uh, for now, we know he used to be Emerald's to guardian beast, but was As you uh, given wish, human form and serves they got now. Yeah, he's as loyal as a dog, you might say. <laughs> So now, story-wise, um, Ascot uh, disguises himself as a kid named Alto, and we're supposed to meet him in the Tree of Life, and he's, uh, this kid's being a jerk. <laughs> and he helps us out by clearing some uh, barriers. And after the Tree of Life, we're, we're, he's supposed to help us clear another story barrier that sends us into another dungeon that's hidden behind a waterfall. But we're going to be doing something called a map glitch to skip that story barrier and just go straight to the next town. Yeah, we're supposed to go into the hospital in this uh, town and find out that, oh, they need medicine because all the pe people are getting sick. And we're supposed to go to the Tree of Life and find that we can't get into the Tree of Life because there's a vines blocking the entrance. And we, we can't get enough space to do our pulverizing bash uh, to run. Even though you can totally get to that point with run speed, I don't know... You know, it's kind of silly, but, um, and then we to come back and learn the instant dash and then go back and do the dungeon, which is pretty long because it's a giant tree and there's a boss and we leave and then there's the boulder and another dungeon, a big puzzle dungeon and another boss, um, some plot there. And, uh, we're just going to skip all of that by uh, doing this kind of uh, tricky glitch here. It's, uh, was it between like three and seven frames to hit this, I believe? I think so. So basically, we're gonna, there's going to be a cool cutscene here when you check the rock. And if you press the map uh, button on the right frame, uh, we get pushed in between bounds because we're not quite out of bounds, but we're also not in bounds. And we also become small like what you see on the map. And if we move in a specific way, it allows us to stay in, like be able to get back into bounds without going out of bounds. There we go. And get back into bounds and just completely skip the the trigger there and allows us just to go straight on to the next town and there's also another glitch that does, it's hard to do it's like frame perfect if you uh, press a or c like this i just got it on the on the map you don't have to uh let me describe it this way uh so whenever you go to a new area, it connects dots on the map. But when you have the map glitch active and you go to the next area, uh, it doesn't connect the dots. So normally you'd have to go back to Lactac Falls, then go back to there to connect the dot. But we just did uh, another glitch that lets us connect the dot without having to go back. So that saves a, a minute in itself because it takes forever to load uh, the map and then load the new area and then go all the way back. So the consequence of this map glitch is that uh, the, the mouths move and it acts like that there's voice acting going on when there is none. And with the way the game works, you can't fast forward through voice acting. So now it's just playing out like there's voice acting and uh, <laughs> there is none. <laughs> yeah, the scene, mo majority of the game in the Japanese version has voice acting in it. Uh, the English version cut all the, doesn't have any voice acting for like the game parts past like other than the evil people's scenes and the uh, Sephiro lectures other than like past the intro and like the anime cutscenes there's no voice acting in the lines um, 
they did the di the special like illustrated diaries instead that kind of like recap each in each character's own words like what's going on. They voiced those instead. Yep. With like the extra space or time or whatever they had. Well, they had three years. <laughs> So basically here, there's a giant beast that's uh, just walking around, not exactly terrorizing the village, but it's causing earthquakes because of its immense size. And this little kid, Nero, his mother's arm got broken because a bookshelf fell on her. And now he's out for revenge against this beast for something that the beast didn't uh, directly cause. And now we have to go save Nero. <laughs> And this dungeon is divided into two sections. Basically, we need to get a medallion on each side. The Sunrise Medallion and the Twilight Medallion. And this dungeon is probably the most difficult in the game. At least I think so. Because uh, a lot of enemies do a lot of damage. And some of them move really, really fast. And so this is uh, this uh, little island here is our nexus in between the two points of the dungeon, and we're gonna we're gonna uh, do death warps at the end of each dungeon after we get the amulet because when you die in this game you just go back to the start of the dungeon all your progress is fine uh, the only thing that happens is you just start back at the beginning of the dungeon we're gonna abuse that in this section to save uh, backtracking because these dungeons are literal mazes. Ugh. So those things do four points of damage, and they, they're really fast. In the Japanese version, they're not really all that threatening. Whoa. That was weird. Just jump and then hit the water. But yeah, in the Japanese version, they're not that threatening, but they still can be. Uh, right, gotta change to her. Clear yeah, without leaves. having... Without having the instant dash here, um, and if you're not running, you're slower than them, so they can easily gang up on you and quickly uh, body you. Yep. Mm, I'm kind of nervous about my health here. Worst case, I can heal. You still have that potion, too. Yeah, well, I don't want to revive a card if I can help it. True, yeah. But if, if it's down to, you know, you're at the entrance of the cave and Fu has one HP and there's a chimera behind you, then... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, luckily I'm pretty okay. Yeah, once we... once On this side, once you get past uh, that last chimera, the rest of this side is really uh, no problem, because the moths move really slow. Yep. And those are the last, like tough enemies here. Hey, you don't want to bounce along walls because then you just lose your uh, momentum. So yeah, got the Sunrise Medallion and then the other side has the Twilight Medallion. Uh, we're going to go back to those mods that we saw before uh, since these guys here only do one damage and they're kind of annoying in how they do their damage. There we go. And just like that, we're at the back of the start of this side of the dungeon. Yeah, there's a talk in chat about how expensive this game is. Um, yes, it is quite expensive. Um, usually hovering like three to five hundred dollars for a complete like inbox copy. I think sometimes you can find like the disc for maybe a hundred, hundred fifty now. I haven't really kept track. I think Racket Boy just updated their Saturn price guide for some of the rarest games, and this is like the th third most expensive U.S. game or something, third or fourth. Jeez, I'm glad I only paid 170 for it. <laughs> I'm glad I only paid 99 for it. And yes, the uh, Japanese version is much cheaper. But it's also a lot more unstable. 
it's more unstable, and I mean, if you're playing casually, you're not gonna skip the cutscenes anyway, but uh, if you're just wanna, like, you know, oh, I feel like playing this game again, the uh, animated cutscenes are not skippable in the Japanese version. Yep. Dang, I got hit twice there. Yeah, though, I'm sure the lag doesn't help. <laughs> and there's like three of those guys. Mana potion in that chest that we used to get for. You can still get. I mean, for safety, but uh, we used to have to get it for a boss coming up. Let's see. I and, think uh, I these giant trees. The giant trees. Um, you're supposed to attack them to get them out of the way, but you can just damage boost through them. I'm let Hikaru die and heal. Yeah, this part's a little scary. I'm gonna kill these guys. <laughs> and normally you're supposed to set this tree on fire and then put it out. Ah, that was a weird sound. Just like made like a weird scream when I hit it. Uh, the, yeah, the rain noise here kind of glitches uh, sounds out sometimes. Ah. So whenever you zone out, the enemies respawn. We can just uh, death warp again. And now that we have both medallions, we can go uh, engage the boss. <laughs> And the boss is really easy. Uh, we can we're gonna use Umi's level two magic again. Uh, we can just spam it. There's no wait in between casts. Uh, it seemed it, from what I, from what I've noticed, uh, uh, beastly bosses a lot usually let you uh, chain your magic, while humanoid bosses don't. Like humanoid bosses, their invincibility and vulnerability frames pause while you're casting magic, while beastly bosses don't seem to do that. And it turns out that this island that we're on was actually a giant turtle. And it's just, and it's been causing these earthquakes, and all it's been trying to do is shake off the growth on it. <laughs> So we're just gonna do a magic glitch again and take him down. Playing this, doing this normally, you'd have to be dodging his um, head moving around, and he'll lunge at you and bite. And uh, his, if you go down to the bottom, his tail is also moving around that, you, that can uh, hit you. And like there, you just saw the magic glitch fail. So this is the only boss that we don't actually kill, because this turns out that he was just misunderstood. And here we get Makona. Uh, he gets introduced early on in the game as an assistant to us. And Makona is like some really powerful god, I guess, according to the anime. Yeah, according to the actual end of the plotline, Makona is like the god of the world. You find that out in season two and, and the second half of the manga. The second half of the manga and the season two of the anime are actually quite different. It's the same basic plot, um, but the way they get to the end, and uh, there's an extra character in the anime, and uh, some relationships are changed and everything. But uh, yeah, I th if you haven't you know seen or read Ray Earth, I recommend doing both. I think. I think the discs have been reprinted recently, oh, or it really? was released on, or released on Blu-ray or something. 
it's not as hard as it was to find for a while for the anime and i want to say the manga got a reprint within the last like five years as well that's pretty cool so now we're going to the sky city of uh, aria i think it's called i can never remember the name aruria or something like that yeah it's a really weird name it's vain vain <laughs> We're in Lunar now, it's vain. <laughs> <laughs> so here we need to go talk to the mayor of the village because we want to go to the Heaven's Labyrinth to get the next ancient machine, but the mayor has locked the gate, so we want to go appeal to him to see if he'll let us in. But he's like, no way, Jose. Oh my god, that kid just beelined for the stairs. So that kid, like, likes... That's what I'm looking for. He likes blocking your way to the stairs. And you have to wait for him to move. Sometimes he'll just get stuck in there for a little bit. So the mayor, being a nice guy, just uh, gra calls his guard and uh, escorts us out. Because he doesn't want anybody to go to uh, the statue of uh, worship. I don't, know, I don't know what the name for it was. It's just they're like their goddess or whatever. Oh man, look at that kid. He's in the way. Oh, he's just gonna be spinning. <laughs> <and> spinning. <laughs> look at him go. Oh, <laughs> there we go. So now we're gonna go stay at the plot inn because we're gonna see like <laughs> maybe he cool, he'll cool off his head and help us out tomorrow. And this is the only plot in where there's no additional cutscenes with it. Usually there's like a cutscene of you staying there. But this one's just like, eh, whatever. We're done. <laughs> oh man, thanks for the cheerleading, Kirby. So now we're going to talk to the mayor again. Uh, turns out the key was stolen, and because we're the only people around asking about it, we're going to be thrown in jail. Um, because, you know, just like with with every, you know, RPG, you got to be thrown in jail at least once. Mm-hmm. Of course. And then we're going to also get the obligatory stealth section. Yeah, because we got to sneak our way out. <laughs> Turns out the locks on the jail sale aren't all that uh, difficult to pick. And Fu is apparently a master lock locksmith. Yep, this game is the only officially translated Ray Earth game out of the four or five Ray Earth games that came out for various systems. The, the Super Nintendo RPG uh, has a fan translation. The one on one of them on the Game Gear got a fan tra translation recently. There's another one on the Game yeah, Gear that's a Princess Maker game that one is still untranslated. Oh yeah, there's one on the Sega Pico as well. That's an educational game. Oh man, that's like kind of awesome. Yeah, and it's really cheap too because Sega Pico games are dirt cheap in Japan. <laughs> so these guards have very narrow line of sight. Uh, we just have to wait for them to pass around. Uh, if you bump into them, uh, you'll get caught. Uh, they only notice your lead character, so if your back characters are kind of run running around, then they won't get noticed, I think. So I've, I've sw I swear sometimes I've had my back characters get noticed, but um, <laughs> that could just be bad, bad luck with the vision being weird. Yeah. So now we gotta wait for this guy. Um, he has like longer longer viewing range than any other guard and can see through not see through a wall but you can see through like those pillars there and we're gonna try to sneak past him just so we're not waiting on his cycle awesome and if we're quick enough which we are we can wait for that we can uh, skip the cycle on that guard and just go straight through the end oh Beautiful. wow you just go right to the corner yeah <laughs> because if you run into corners you don't you don't want uh, to get the the animation where you're pushing against the wall so you can keep your speed without having to rebuild it. 
But also, you're just like running right behind that guy. It's like I'm like very tense during. I'm very tense during this whole. <laughs> oh, I am too. Like I, I've actually like bumped into him by accident. <laughs> the um, controls in this game are actually pretty slippery, um, especially when you got running speed. So it's very easy to overshoot where you're trying to stop. So, uh, oh yeah, this game also has a unique. Thing where each character can give their own opinion when you examine items. Uh, the only time it's actually mandatory is in that section where we need to examine the chimney as Fu because she's the only one that comes to the realization that, oh hey, there's footprints here, someone must have come through the chimney. She and, has glasses, therefore she sees the best. Yep, and uh, there we ha have Fario. Uh, he's covered in soot because he climbed through the chimney, we found his flute. Turns out he's being uh, mind controlled by Alcyone. Was Hikaru standing on top of Umi there? Uh, uh maybe I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> I think when when you all, when like you moved away from uh, Fario automatically, I think uh, Umi was still like pushed like in her running state, and uh, Hikaru was just kind of standing on top of her sprite. <laughs> That's awesome. So now we're just uh, scouting out the entrance to see uh, whoever stole the key, if they're going to use it, because uh, Rafarga's like, hey, why don't you just do that? I'm sure the culprit will come to the scene of the crime. And, you know, he's right. It makes sense. And voila, we have Ferio here with the mystery woman who is just Alcyon wearing a cloak. <laughs> or I guess it's more of like, I don't know, a scarf and a cloak. I don't know. So here in the next dungeon, we're going to be skipping the entirety of the dungeon. Uh, there's like a, a little wrong warp we can do in the first room, where if we jump into it while running in a certain way, it'll uh, load the the near an area near the end of the dungeon without actually loading the, the map for it. So we're going to build up running speed. Normally we would just do instant dash, but since we don't have that, we have to build it up ourselves. And first try, nice. So now like everything's like really messed up here, uh, but because of that, we're now at the end of the dungeon. Yeah, so the it loads in like the top level, the top layer of sprites and the stuff that you can interact with and the collision of a fi one of the last rooms in the dungeon and also for some reason loads the exits as well but keeps the rest of the map um as the like the middle layer i guess you would call it is that first room so uh there was an earlier glitch that whole knockback glitch found by uh, Michitsu, where you could like get knocked back in a later room of the dungeon and skip part of it and kind of have the same effect but then this was found which is a lot faster and easier because the knockback glitch is a lot less reliable to do yeah but it also skips uh, getting food's final spell which is like a, a floating spell to let you float over obstacles and gaps uh and here uh, a bunch of cutscenes. uh fario attacks us and his mind control gets broken but it turns out rafarga is under mind control by zagat which is a far more sinister and powerful mind control and Rafarga fights it, but by fighting it, uh, he walks off the edge of the cliff and falls into oblivion. But he's fine. So this as boss... long as you don't see the body, it's fine. <laughs> yep. So this boss fight is unique. Um, normally, this boss fight is very luck heavy, but we can stand in a very specific, uh, gen well, not very specific, a general position, and the boss will just constantly spin around in circles. And we can just uh, magic it down. It's very strange. Normally this boss like goes all over the map. It darts. It does a lot of annoying stuff. And it counts as a monster, so or a beast or whatever. So he'll uh, he can cast magic, and his invulnerability frames will still go. So we're just gonna cast water tornado over and over again. He's just gonna spin around in circles and uh, not do anything. Oh yeah, we're far going to respawn at the start of the dungeon. <laughs> uh, this is this is just called Magic Knight Ray Earth uh, for Sega Saturn. I think it's just called that in Japanese as well, but obviously it's a uh, Mahokishi Ray Earth in Japanese, you know, Japanese title. 
Yep. Um, no subtitle or anything. And just like that, the boss is dead. Uh, the magic glitch is pretty easy to do. Uh, it's just pressing the character swap button and the uh, magic button on the same frame. We changed the control scheme so that the character swap buttons on Y and Z instead of L and R. And it just allows me to uh, press both C and Z with my thumb instead of having to try to uh, synchronize my index finger and my thumb, which is harder. <laughs> And yeah, some... there's a lot of Rare Earth games that have, like, they're the same title, but they're different games. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so now we get our second machine. Um, I think uh, his name is Wyndham. Yeah. Yeah, Wyndham. And that one's for Foo. So now we get another villain cutscene. Get some quality voice acting Here's from Zaya and Inova. His will was much stronger than we had anticipated. How do you wish to address this situation, dear lord? Equip your armor and go, Inova. I pray you do not fail. I shall do exactly as you desire, my liege. So now that uh, Wyndham has been released, I guess, I don't know exactly what the process is, or awakened, I suppose. I think Makona helps, if I remember correctly, maybe. I don't know. Because he, he talked to Saris, and maybe he talks to Wyndham, too. I don't uh, know. It's Makona. <laughs> yeah. And now, uh, because... Uh, Wyndham is gone. There's a and a sky elevator from some guy's house in the woods <laughs> to the the statue of the goddess. So it turns out Rafarga's not dead, but he does have amnesia, uh, possibly from fighting the mind control. They don't really elaborate on it. And we're going to go find him, and find that some old guy has been uh, looking after him. And he suggests us to go get uh, medicine from uh, Lyri, which was a dun which we skipped the Tree of Life dungeon where we are supposed to get the ingredients for that medicine, but the people there are like, cool, sure, take it. We got the medicine anyways, we didn't need you. <laughs> yeah, it's only because the, the guy who's supposed to teach you the running dash that, like... In, in the plot, we pretend, we tell everybody that, oh, this guy got the medicine. He he's, he helped everybody because um, he tried to and he got knocked out by Alcyon. Um, basically, we'll, we just say that he did it. <laughs> yep. We're just going to say that he did it even though we totally did all the work, even though we just kind of left him to do whatever. Yeah, it's really lucky that um, this flag gets tripped, that we don't have to, like, it's not like we come back here and, oh, you have to do the dungeon. It's uh, good that, that the flag gets kind of overwritten and we can just talk to the nurse and she goes in with her, oh, you need some medicine line, instead of going, oh, you need a, we need medicine from the tree and we don't have any leaves left line. Yep. It's wonderful. So she walks off, gets the medicine, and she's like, oh, hey, you're the one that got, that got it, right? They're like, yeah, sure, wink, wink. We helped you out so fast, we never even met before. <laughs> so now we go back to the Whispering Woods again, uh, give her fire the medicine, and uh, then he walks off with a splitting headache. There we go. I almost forgot the inputs there for a second. Because you can, you can uh, hold the input to go the direction you want to go, so you can go basically on the first possible frame. So we're going to give him the medicine. He remembers who he is, but uh, now Zagat's mind control is re-entering, is, is taking control of him again. And because of that, we have to uh, kill him, <laughs> sadly. This game, or this story is full of 
uh, us killing our friends. Basically, every like area or town we walk into, like we do, kind of help stuff out, but we're also causing a lot of destruction in our path. And the girls actually like talk about it a little bit, like you know, why do we have to keep fighting? And uh, our friend, like, uh, because when Ascot, uh, Ascot died earlier, he was our friend because he kind of he kind of turned on uh, Zagat and the evil people. And also, Caldina also died then because of Alcyon. So uh, yeah, a lot of people have uh, have kind of uh, died in our uh, path as we do stuff. So. So uh, Rafarga is a pretty easy fight. He only has two attacks. Uh, he has a slashing attack and a magic attack. But for the magic attack, we have to wait for him to cast it before he's vulnerable. Because while at the beginning of his cast, he's invulnerable when he's casting it. Uh, not ideal for him to cast magic, but he seems to favor that sometimes. And I guess at least it means he stands still. And when we cast magic when he's casting his spell, um, it does mean that like the, our, our magic kind of overrides it and we'll get rid of all those particles that are flying around. So we don't have to like run away from them and dodge them and stuff. Okay, and then uh, he turns red, and while he's doing that, he's also invulnerable. Oops. Now he's being real nice with the slashes. All right, that wasn't so bad. He was like at first he was like being cast happy, then he decided to play nice. And he was pretty much staying in one area, too. He can move around a lot if you let him. Yeah. So, uh, since we can't... Since we we don't want to kill him, and Nova does the job for us. Because Nova is a, a loyal guy, and does whatever Zagat tells him to. So uh, we spend some time, uh, dig a grave, uh, and bury the guy, and then a volcano erupts, and it's the volcano that we want, not the other volcano that we visited earlier. So now we go back to the first town we went in, uh, which is now ravaged by the eruption of the volcano, but because of that, it opens the path to the volcano area that wasn't available before. And now we're going to be going to the final dungeon in the game. And it's a fairly difficult dungeon casually, I think. Like, it, I still think that uh, the dungeon in Liquido is more difficult, but this dungeon is pretty challenging by its, in its own right. Uh, there's a lot of tight platforming, uh, there's a lot of um, flying enemies. <laughs> yeah, this one's more of a tough dungeon because of, like, getting through it platform-wise, while the lake dungeon is the enemies are the tough part of that one. Enemies here aren't too bad. I mean, there's the flying snacks that uh, lag the screen, but honestly, that's about it. They're, they don't take, like, a bunch of hits or anything to get knocked out. It's more the platforming because you want to hit the cycles and there's a couple hard to jump ones if you're not if you haven't kept running speed. Yeah. So now here we learn uh, the most powerful magic in the game uh, called Flash, which is the name after Hikaru's dog. Uh, it costs 10 mana to cast and we don't have 10 mana to cast it, but thanks to the magic glitch we can cast it anyways and just uh, completely wreck any boss with it. Okay, good. I made, I made the jump. Uh, normally, you're not supposed to be able to make that jump. Uh, they expect you to go to some moving platforms, but if you're really good with your running jumps, uh, you can just completely bypass that. And now I we're going to just... Huh? <laughs> I said I haven't seen that one before, actually. That's good. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm just going to do that. And now, normally you're not supposed to be able to go through these rocks, but there's like a little gap that you can push yourself through. Uh, they expect you to uh, do some side platforming that we can just completely skip. Ok, 
Okay, good. Now there's a little teleporter maze here. We want to head over the platforms here to this teleporter. Yep. Uh, there's two teleporters to take. It doesn't mean... Dang, I missed the platform. I missed the cycle. I was just a little bit slow, I guess. Uh, so, like, there's, like, a, a quick cycle you can get if you're fast enough. Uh, it's tough. That's the hardest... One of the hardest jumps in this dungeon is right there. You can just barely make it when you don't have run speed. <laughs> and if you do have run, if you do have run speed, then, uh, oh... That one's hard, too. <laughs> and now there's a snake. Yeah, I'm gonna and kill now... him. Oh, whoa. <laughs> I'm gonna kill that snake because it's because uh, if you fall in the lobby, you go back to the last solid ground. You run. So I guess this could this could be a good candidate for finding a uh, precise knockback glitch to get across the room. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it'd be possible because like, the knockback glitch only moves you like upright. And the path you want is like directly in front of you. Like I said, precise, very precise. <laughs> <laughs> but we're all good now. Uh, there's no, there's no more things to worry about, and there's a thingy to heal us. Yeah, that's basically the last tough part of the dungeon, and it's a uh, no, no, not much more dungeon after this. Yeah. Okay, switch to Fu here, because we're going to be using her for the magic glitch onto Hikaru. Just to take down the uh, any future boss in three hits. Because <laughs> the flash spell is just that powerful. So now we're going to fight Alcyon for one and final time. Uh, she got stabbed by her own ice magic in a previous cutscene. And she's bleeding to death. And instead of letting us uh, heal her wounds, she wants to fight us to death because... She's in love with Zagat, but it turns out Zagat's in love with the princess that he kidnapped. And she can't reconcile that fact. Because she wants to be the subject. It might help if I have the right spell selected. <laughs> I got ahead of myself there. Dang. There we go. So the Alcyon fight casually is pretty tough. She uh, moves around a lot. She likes to uh, rotate around you and go off screen. Uh, she also has uh, two moves where she's invulnerable doing it because she's like off screen doing it. And uh, she's been she's been nice in that fight. She didn't do any of her off screen moves. She stayed on the screen most of the time. But I did forget to change Hikaru's spell, which really caught me off guard. <laughs> yeah, I saw a little fire arrow go out, but that's okay. <laughs> and Alcyon's... We, we tried to save her. Um, we were like, you know, hey, let's heal you. And she's like, no, I, w I want to die. So everyone's angsting about everyone dying, but um, hey, our final machine's here. Yep, now we got a final machine, uh, the namesake, Ray Earth. And, uh... Makona comes in, lets us communicate with our uh, stony friend, Clef. And is there another Zagot cutscene here? I don't think so. Oh, there is. Never mind. I thought so. Yeah, this is the one where he sends out, tells an Innova to, uh, go, and, uh, Master Zagot, true form and I stuff like you. that. Yeah. Return me to my original form. The power of the Magic Knights can no longer be ignored. It is my duty to destroy them before they become powerful enough to threaten me. Yeah, they're pulling out the, they're pulling out the big guns that, now. We're, we're pretty strong. We've, uh, leveled up, quote-unquote, a lot. <laughs> Yep. Our our weapons and armor are pretty much fully evolved as uh, Escudo weapons evolve with the uh, the more their wearers like soul and stuff uh, grows with them. Yep. And it's just, we're still like even though we're on the entrance of the dungeon, we're still considered a dungeon, so we have to zone out and go to Polyzoo before we can go to our next destination.
So we're going to be going to Precia's Manor, which we went to at the beginning of the game, if you play casually. But since uh, we we skipped that whole section, we can uh, we never actually went there in the first place. And there's actually a little visual glitch there that we'll be seeing. Uh, basically, when you first enter Precia's Manor, Makona's there in the chair, uh, just like with the chair turned around so you can't see who it is. And uh, since we never got that cutscene in the first place, Makona is still sitting in the chair despite Precy also being in the room. And then also this is the only uh, boss fight in the game where you don't get healed after completing the fight because uh, there's no uh, story level up like there is with other fights. So normally, uh, if you play casually, that chair is turned around and empty, <laughs> but it never, that never triggered. <laughs> this is another lucky, uh, like, flag that happens, that luckily Precia is standing here and you can talk to her and she'll do the final, like, opening cutscenes here to open the back of her thing. It's not like if she wasn't here and Macon is there and then you get, like, caught into the prologue and, you know, mess things up, so... Yep. It's good that uh, certain flags do overwrite other ones, or else a lot of these glitches would be completely useless. I mean, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't mind getting caught in the prologues. It still skips the first, you know, like 20 minutes of cutscenes. Yeah, but uh, it's, it'd be kind of funny going through the uh, prologue, the, the tutorial dungeon, when you're already, like, leveled up and everything. <laughs> and bringing back the Escudo when you've already been having Escudo weapons and stuff like that. It's just a free level but, uh, up. <laughs> yeah, we would get our we would get our final level up. So here Lumi we're would back still be at, missing one, but <laughs> we're back at where we first entered Sephiro from Tokyo. And the clef here was turned to stone by Alcyone early on in the game. But even though Alcyone's dead, the spell still persists because she called on uh Zagat's magic to uh turn uh clef to stone. So now, yeah, it's like a power up. Yeah. So now Inova is back into her, his uh, beastly form, and we got to deal with him. He has a lot, a lot of health, and casually he's kind of an annoying fight because he moves really fast and dashes around a lot. And in the speed run, he's super easy to kill, at least. But he does. He is uh, unique in that he has um, variable and vulnerability frames. So sometimes they're short, sometimes they're long, and everywhere in between. So this fight so, can vary a little bit. So Fario knocks off his horn so we can actually damage him. And he doesn't even really have a horn in the sprite. So and then he's going to lure him up to the top so he doesn't move around as much. And then he's just waiting for his invulnerability frames to uh, wear off so we can uh, magic glitch flash. Um, apparently he like... You hit him with flat. You hit him and you drop his HP under a certain amount, and he supposedly like heals back up to full. But it doesn't matter because we just flash him down. <laughs> I mashed a little too much. Oh, you pulled me. <laughs> yeah, you have to be careful mashing your magic button if you're using it to skip text because uh, you can very easily cast a magic spell like if you're in a dungeon like in that counted as a dungeon there yeah so now we're entering the point of no return uh, if we talk to Clef here and we say yes uh, we go to Zagat's castle and we can no longer return to do anything else in the game like uh, collect any collectibles uh, here we summon our robots uh, or Gundams <laughs> And they just kind of rise up as these giant things. And then we use them to break Zagat's barrier. So we can storm his castle. It turns out that Zagat's castle is actually Emerald's castle. He just kind of took over and redecorated a bit. Yeah, made everything purple. <laughs> Also, our girls are in their, like, final armor, um, here. Uh, Fu's glasses disappear. That's, I don't know, we don't know, I'm not, not, we don't know, but that's just a thing in the plot that her glasses disappear, but she can still see fine. It's like she got magical contacts or something. Yeah. 
Uh, there's no there's no category that doesn't skip the cutscenes. I mean, you can do it for fun sometimes. Uh, the Japanese version, that's the category. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Japanese version does not cannot cannot skip the cutscenes. Um, then you get the actual like original acting, and it's like exactly because they just ripped these cutscenes from the anime, basically. So uh, here's they got. We're gonna fight him now. Uh, we're just gonna uh, hit Flash and win. He has, I think it's three different magic spells. He's got these uh, balls that come out and have the uh, things attached to them. Uh, he's invulnerable while teleporting and also when starting to cast a spell when he's like got a white outline. Um, he has a lightning spell that he can cast and he has this meteor spell that covers the entire screen. Yep. So, but, but uh, wait, he's not dead yet. He's gonna summon his own giant robot. And this fight's pretty interesting. Uh, singular attacks, uh, Hikaru's the strongest, but uh, Fu has a weird thing where she can land multiple hits at the same time because her arrow attack is like five arrows. And this boss can die in as little as five hits with, with Fu. So we're going to rely on Fu's damage as much as possible just to yeah. kill him much more quickly. For some reason, uh, first of all, now we're, it's, now we're playing a shmup. Um... <laughs> This isn't just an RPG, action RPG, this is a shmup. And for some reason, each of Fu's arrows does the points of damage versus just like, oh, he got hit. He, he did a damage. Um, so Eternal Spiral, that's the name of the robot, um, has three attacks, well, like four attacks, I guess. Um, he's got the charge attack, he's got the sword oh, swipe. Dang. He's got bees. I just got sword swiped. Uh, yeah, and he does a lot of damage. And uh, yeah, Fu's down, so we're gonna rely on Hikaru now. Um, so he got the charge, he's got the sword swipe, he's got the bees, and uh, I think that's it, actually. Okay, I gotta watch out for those sword swipes, because they hurt. And the lower health he gets, the more sword swipes he'll start doing in a row. Um, no, the more bees he does. <laughs> the more bees. It's either one. I've seen him just stand there and do like three. Like he's like I can tell he's low on health, and he just starts doing like um, a bunch of sword swipes. Yeah, the oh bees. Oh my god, uh, he's just spamming the bees. And bees and <laughs> the bees go everywhere, and you're trying to hit the bees because they got lasers, and he's sword swiping it. <laughs> and yeah, he's a uh, can be very annoying. Yep. So he's gonna do it again, and the third time. Also, he has invulnerability frames until he attacks. And sometimes he can attack multiple times. Yeah, so you can't get in without risking getting hit. Uh, you don't have to destroy the shield on his arm. It does, like, tank hits. It's not, like, his main HP thing. Um, and his collision is, like, on his body. And then when his, like, sword is active, that counts as, like, a damage box as well. A hurt box as well. There we go. He's being kind after everyone else died. <laughs> it's like he knew or something. But I'm glad that I didn't uh, have to restart the fight, at least. <laughs> Although it would have been nice to do it with Boo. So now Zagat is dead once and for all, but our fight's not over yet. Yeah, but we're gonna go save the princess now. Yep. And by save, uh, I mean, uh, kill the princess. Yeah, as it turns out, the princess was also in love with Zagat, and her, because her magic is so powerful and she's currently distraught over Zagat's death that if we don't kill her, she'll destroy the world. Because the most powerful magic in Sephiro is the uh, power of your feelings, and... Emerald is known as like the pillar of Sephiro, so she's supposed to like pray and keep the world safe. And she kind of got distracted by falling in love with her uh, closest, uh, her, her priest Sephiro, not Sephiro, priest they got. So um, she summoned the magic. She summoned us here for us to kill her, and she's not going to go down without a fight. Nope. But this is also like one of the easier fights in the game once you understand it. Basically, she does. She has four attacks. And she cycles through them in the same pattern every single time. But as we are, we are not powerful enough to defeat her, so we have to become, uh... What's that one where the robots fuse together? Voltron. Voltron. Yes, yeah, so we have to become Voltron and take down the princess. And, yeah, Makona basically, there's the cutscene here, Makona basically helps us become Voltron and merge into one 
um, super giant robot that is strong enough, all our powers combined, to defeat Emerald's robot. Also, in that cutscene where we get destroyed as the three robots, if you mash your magic fast enough, you can cast it during that cutscene and then soft lock the game. Oh, wow. Okay. Cause, yeah, because you become invulnerable while she's killing you. And then you're just kind of stuck there because you can't do anything. Okay, so we're going to try to take as little damage as we can because taking damage means you're not attacking and not attacking is bad. So Emerald here has... Uh, I'll let you concentrate on the boss to actually uh, kill her. Um, Emerald has... Um, Multiple parts you can damage, but you only need to destroy her head to finish the battle. At first, we thought you had to destroy every part of her, and we'd hang back and kind of use the homing attack to hit her arms, and then her shoulder, and then her horns, and then her head. We really just need to destroy her head, so we're using magic here to be able to save um, magic that just kind of destroys and time the time is coming up to time. <laughs> so yeah, she has a certain pattern, like eye lasers lightning, everything like that. Once you know the pattern, she's really easy. You can just hang out in a corner and uh, chill there. And that was a PB, like, uh, I think. I think that was a PB, but like... Yeah, yeah, you're, you're on the board is a 130-54. This nice. is 130-43, so PB, nice. Uh, world record is a 125 for this category by Mijitsu. And Mijitsu also holds the any percent record, which is like, was it 22 minutes or something? Yeah, 22 minutes, and then Mijitsu also did a task, which is 13 minutes. So I, I highly recommend watching all of the runs of this game. My, my PB isn't good, so we're not going to talk about it. Don't watch mine. Watch uh, watch Shentox and Mijitsu's runs of this game. Um, and however however you can, uh, I highly recommend playing this game. It's, very, it's pretty short, like, for a casual playthrough, even watching all the cutscenes and getting all the items and everything. Yeah. And that was a lot of fun. I'm glad that we finally got to show off this run with the brand new route. Uh, there was a lot that happened to this game this year. Uh, it just, you basically just dismantled this game, shaved off an hour like it was nothing. <laughs> yeah, like I said, the the race last year was like two, was like at two and a half hours. I think Shentok's time was, and mine was like a two fifty five or something. I don't remember, but uh, yeah, this game got a little destroyed this year, so. Uh... And of course, we, we fully rec we fully welcome all anybody interested in running the game. The leaderboards have guides and uh, like a straight up full walkthrough and video guides for all the glitches. Uh, please join us. It's a lot of fun to run this game and uh, a lot of different categories. And you can even run the Japanese version and watch all the cutscenes. Yeah, and it's just a fun game in general. The movement's a, like a little bit slippery at first, but once you get used to it, it's really satisfying. And thank you so much for having me on this marathon. I'm so glad we got to show off this game. It's it's wonderful. It's one of my favorite games to run. It just has that right length. There's a lot of action going on. And it's, it's really easy to get into. Yeah, if we can show the credits like to the end, there's a little uh, special, like a very special thanks section that I enjoy that uh, um, thanks some very special things. <laughs> like the patient Not... Saturn fans. Patient Saturn fans. Is Mountain Mountain is Mountain Dew in this one? Yes. Okay, yeah, because Mount Mountain Dew is something the uh, working designs put in like a lot of their credits for. Uh, games i know uh, i think still mirage has it as well and uh the game i'll be running uh next sunday not this weekend but the last day of the marathon also thanks mountain dew so it's a little thing that they always put in their special thanks because working designs was cool like that <laughs> yeah so uh, go out buy sega saturn uh buy games uh drain your wallet because games aren't cheap <laughs> But this was like the last game ever released in the U.S. on the Saturn, and it was definitely one of the earlier ones in the uh, 
in the Japan. So there's a big gap between when it came out in Japan and when it came out in the U.S. Just because uh, uh, the source code was partially lost. And also, the head of Saturn of the Saturn head of Sega of America at the time did not like 2D games, and uh, kind of blocked releasing them if possible. So. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's food without her glasses. Special thanks to oh, not the uh, oh, very special thanks, Mountain Dew. Yes, very special thanks, <laughs> Mountain Dew and patient Saturn fans. Yeah. And of course, if you do beat this game, I think uh, I think for every hundred percent, or just have to finish it and have a save, finish save file on your. Uh, Saturn or whatever, but there are outtakes in the in the options screen. As yep. usual, another working design staple. You can go, you know, go beat this game and listen to the outtakes. They're good. Well, you have to get all the rainbow amulets for that to happen. Oh yeah, I do it. All the rainbow amulets. So. Oh. 